Welcome to the fourth edition of the Colonel Marmel's Miniatures Review vidcast. I'm delighted to be able to announce that this week's show is sponsored by Rattlehead Games, who are currently offering Urban War at 15% off for a limited time. Okay, we've only got a top nine rather than a top ten this week, not because I'm an idle bugger, but just because there aren't that many great new minis out there at the moment, and hopefully we'll be back to ten next week. At nine we have Privateer Press with their War Machine range. This is an Iron Fang Ulan, I'm sure I'm not saying that right, and it's going to be released in September as part of the War Machine Superiority batch. Well there are a few things I wanted to say about this miniature, and none of them good I'm afraid. Firstly the pose of the horse just doesn't look right to me, there's something a bit strange about the right foreleg and overall it doesn't convince me as a horse. Secondly, I guess, it's just the overall look of the figure, it's not to my taste and I have to say that straight up front. The spikiness of it, all the all the armour, etc, it just looks, looks a bit over the top for me. That's a personal opinion and I'm sure you probably disagree with me on that. But thirdly, it's the price. This miniature is going to retail in September for 1999 US dollars. That's nearly 20 US dollars for a single miniature. I really, I'm having trouble getting my head around that one. It's a lot of money, but um, obviously people are prepared to pay. There you go. At number eight, we have Bueda War Games Isair range. These are called trogs or primitive orcs. As I understand it, they're going to be retailing for one euro a figure. I think they're quite fun miniatures for the asking price, certainly a little different. My only quibble would be the girth of the spears that they're using. Rackham take the 7th spot this week. This is the Dragon Titan of Arclash. Now details on this one are pretty sketchy at the moment, but as I understand it, this figure is huge. If you look carefully, you can see on, underneath one of his legs there, you can see a human figure, just to give you an idea of the scale of this thing. Now from the rumours I've heard online, this could be retailing for something like 250 US dollars, which is a heck of a lot of money, even for a Titan Dragon. Sixth spot goes to French company Iliad and their La Retour de Dieu range. This new green is called Baylor. He's some kind of demon. I'm afraid I can't tell you at the moment what sort of scale he's going to be in, although from the pictures I've seen online it does look like he's going to be a pretty big model. Here's a close-up of the upper part of the body for you. I should note here that Iliad produce their figures in resin rather than metal, but this seems like a nice sculpt. Depending on the price, it could be a winner. At five, it's E-Bob Miniatures. This rather terrifying miniature is actually a new giant spider from E-Bob Miniatures. Just to give you an indication of the size of the miniature, it's actually on a 40mm base, and I understand it's going to retail for four UK pounds. At four, it's another French company, Fenril Miniatures. This dwarf cannon set will retail for 25 euros, the figures are made out of resin rather than metal, but it's still a very nice set. You can see from this close-up of two of the gunners that they've got plenty of character. I particularly like the one holding one hand over one ear. Presumably he's only going to go deaf in one ear rather than two. Yet another French company, Oniric Miniatures, are at three. This is Chasseur de Prime. It's a resin figure retailing for seven euros. A decent looking figure, my only quibble with it really is the fact that the hands look a little bit big to me. This is uh, Mutanti Oxidi, I'm sure I haven't pronounced that right either. Another resin figure, 28mm, and it's just a bit balmy isn't it? It looks like a lady, some strange kind of weapon with metal legs. Difficult to describe really, I guess you can, you can see for yourself. I really like it anyway. This one's called Architect Cortillion, again 28mm resin, retailing for €7. Euros. At 2 this week, it's the wonderfully bizarre Par Room Station. These are US mechanised infantry from Par Room's Victorian science fiction range. They're sculpted by Bob Charity, and I really like them. I don't know much about them, I'm afraid. I can't give you a price or even tell you how tall they are in millimetres, but they look like a lot of fun and very different. The number one spot this week is claimed by Reaper Miniatures with three great new greens. Reaper's figures tend to be a little bit up and down for me, some good, some bad, but this Bone Caller by Bob Ridolfi is excellent. A really nice piece, it's a female sorceress summoning some undead skeletons as you can see rising up beneath her. 
nice sense of motion in it and just an excellent sculpt. Next up is this dwarf captain sculpted by Bobby Jackson. It's everything you could want in a dwarf miniature I think. Chunky, heavily armoured, big sword and a really nice helmet and faceplate. But my favourite single miniature of this week has to be this dwarf berserker warlord by Jason Weeb. Just a fantastic berserker pose. I like the balding head, the beard, the two enormous weapons. Okay, that's a bit over the top, I'll admit it. But this is just a fantastic sculpt, full of action, full of energy, and I wouldn't like to meet him in the middle of a battlefield, that's for sure. And I think I've quickly just got time to let you know that hassle-free miniatures have got a sale on at the moment. They've got 20% off all their figures until Wednesday the 26th of July. That's all for this week, and I hope to see you here same time, same place next week.